Okay, this is lesson 3.4, talking about scientific notation. Scientific notation is just a way of writing really big or really small numbers using powers, using powers of 10. So we have this example before us. Uh, Alpha Centauri is the next closest star to Earth, and it is approximately 40 trillion kilometers away from us. Now, if you were writing a science book or something, you'd have to write... 40 trillion using a whole bunch of zeros. <clears throat> now that can be pretty long and cumbersome. And if you're doing math with this or you're writing it and you happen to miss a zero or accidentally add a zero, you significantly change what this number is. If you add an extra zero, you're accidentally saying that this star is 10 times further away from Earth than it really is. If you lose a zero, you miss a zero by accident, you're saying this star is 10 times closer than it actually is, and that's a pretty big difference. So what we do is they have come up with something called scientific notation. So to avoid mistakes when writing many zeros, to avoid mistakes when writing many zeros we express large numbers in scientific notation so we'll come back to expressing 40 trillion using scientific notation once we learn a little bit more about it. The first thing we want to do is we're going to make a, a table. <clears throat> and the table is going to look like this. You can let me write it before you write it, that's fine. But we're going to have numbers in standard form. Then we're going to have numbers in product form. And then we're going to have numbers in scientific notation. And actually I need this column to be a little bit bigger. And we're going to use this uh, 40 trillion here. And we're going to write it in standard form, except we're going to start with a smaller number. We'll start with the number 400. Now, to write this in product form, product means you have two factors multiplied by each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the power of 10 out of this number. So instead of 400, what is that really? Well, it's 4 times 100. 4 hundreds. And this 100 we can represent as a power of 10. Okay. So we're going to rewrite it four times. And does anyone know what 100 is as a power of 10? 10 to the power of? Two. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. So in our scientific notation, we have uh, a one-digit number multiplied by a power of 10 that will get us all the way back to standard form. OK, let's try a bigger number. We're going to take the same value. We're going to go for 4,000. And if we were going to write that in product form with a single digit number first, what do we need to multiply 4 by to get 4,000? One thousand. One thousand. And one thousand as a power of 10? Three. 10 to the power of 3. 10 times 10 times 10. Okay, I'm going to fill in this left-hand column. The next number that we do will be 40,000. Then we'll do 400,000. Then we'll do 4 million. Then we're going to skip a few and do 40 trillion. You can go ahead and fill in that chart and check back in a minute to see how you did.
All right, here is the final answers, and I'll do the last one. This is going to get us how far Alpha Centauri is from Earth in scientific notation. Again, we have 40 trillion. So if I factor out the 4, then I have 4 times 10 trillion. So I can think of that as there's 10,000, 10 million, 10 billion, 10 trillion. <coughs> And then in scientific notation, all I'm going to do is essentially count how many times I need to move this decimal place. So in 10 trillion, the decimal would be right there. 10 trillion is a whole number. And I'm just going to bounce it 1, 2, 3. This group will be 6, 9, 12, and one more will be 13 places. Okay? So we've got here in scientific notation, uh, 4 times 10 to the power of 13. Now that's much easier to write, takes up a lot less space, and I'm not going to confuse uh, the number there. I'm not going to miss a 0 or add a 0. It's 4 times 10 to the power of 13. And that is an example of scientific notation. In example 1, we have a scenario talking about the planet Mercury, it's about 58 million kilometers from the sun, and we need to express that in scientific notation. Scientific notation. notation. So uh, here we go, we write our number first, we've got 58, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, that's 58 million, and since we know that typically the decimal place would go here, because 58 million is a whole number, all we need to do is count how many times we move the decimal place? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times in order to have a one digit number on uh, as the only whole number involved. So if we want to break this down, we've got 5.8 times 10 million three, one, two, three. Right, we have five, 58 million is the same as 5.8 times 10 million, right? Five times 10 million will get us 50 million. 0.8 times 10 million will get us uh, the rest of these eight million. And then to bump that into scientific notation, we use our uh, one digit outside the decimal place, 5.8 times, and then we express this big number as a power of 10. And that is 10 to the power of, and you just really need to count the zeros, 3, 6, 7 zeros, which is the same number of times that we bumped the decimal place to get to 5.8. Okay? So the number of places that you move the decimal point to the left is the exponent that you put to the power of 10. And that's the distance of Mercury from the Sun in scientific notation. Okay, in example two, uh, we're told to calculate this expression using powers of 10. Both of these pieces are already in scientific notation, but we need to multiply them together. So what do you notice about the operator here, the operator here, and the operator here? It's all multiplication. There's a rule in math called the commutative property. There's a commutative commutative property of addition and of multiplication. It means that any of these pieces you can record in whatever order you want. You can do the operation in whatever order you want because it's all multiplication. Okay? So for instance, 6 times 8 is the exact same as 8 times 6. And 3 times 6 times 8 is the same as 8 times 3 times 6. It doesn't matter what order we do it in. So there's something we're going to do here, and we're going to rearrange this situation, because even though these guys are in brackets, they're a group, there's still just multiplication between them all. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take this guy, and we're going to rewrite it. We're going to put our typical numbers together, and then we're going to group our powers of 10. So in rearranging it this way, I have not changed the value of the expression at all. Haven't changed it. But what I have done is I've made it easy to see that we can group 
these guys together and multiply them. You could probably do that in your head. You should be able to. Uh, I'll explain how. And then we can think about these together. Well, this together is just applying our rules of exponents, right? We have two powers with the same base being multiplied together. So what's the rule for putting these together? We add the exponent. So here we'll do this first. We have 4 times 8, which is 32. And then we have another half of 8. So 32 plus 4 is 36. We still have this multiplication sign in the middle. But now we have, and I'm going to write each step, we have 10 to the power of 3 plus 5, which is 36 times 10 to the power of 8. Now it might look like we're done, but there's a problem. Because scientific notation only has one digit to the left of the decimal place. This one has two. Any ideas on how I can bump this over? Perfect. I'm going to bump the decimal. I'm basically going to take a factor of 10 out of this and move it into my power of 10, which means I'm basically just going to, remember if I bump the decimal place to the left, I'm adding a 0. So we're going to end up with 3.6 times 10 to the power of 9. And that is our final answer there. Just a quick note at the very bottom, hopefully you have a little bit of space for a, a definition on scientific notation. In scientific notation, a number has the form, a number has the form x times 10 to the power of n, where x is greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. What does that mean? Uh, x is greater than or equal to 1, which means it's going to at least have the number 1 to the left of the decimal place. But it's less than 10, so there will never be two digits to the left of the decimal place, which is why in our previous example we had to go from this form into there, because we had two digits to the, in the number 36, we had two digits to the left of the decimal place. So we had to convert that so we had one digit to the left of the decimal place. Uh, but it can't be a zero either. If it's a zero, then you need to bump the decimal place one to the right and take off a zero from their last answer. So anyways, in scientific notation, a number has the form x times 10 to the power of n, where x is greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10, and 10 to the power of n, which is in our form here, is a power of 10, which means it's 10 times itself, n times. Whatever n is, that's how many factors of 10 you have. So 10 to the power of 2 is 10 times 10. 10 to the power of 9, which we had here, is 10 times 10 times 10, 9 times. And then times 3.6, and that's how we express big numbers in scientific notation. If this thing was not in scientific notation, it would look like this. Three, uh, there's one move, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, comma, comma, comma. Three million, uh, three billion, six hundred million. That's this number right here. Scientific notation, really easy to work with. Just got to get Practice used to problems it. for scientific notation in using large numbers are found on page 29, numbers 1 through 15, and 23 through 25. Okay, we've done scientific notation using big numbers, and essentially what it comes down to is being able to know your uh, powers of 10. So we're going to just work through this chart, we're going to follow the pattern down, and then we're going to express these, this group 
the negative exponents, the powers of 10 with a negative exponent. We're going to express them as a fraction and as a decimal uh, to hopefully see the pattern that we have. So what is, uh, starting at the top, what is the value of 10 to the power of 2? It's 100, right? It's just 10 times 10. So it's a power of 10. 100 is a power of 10. If we were going to do this chart the other way, the next biggest one is 1,000. Okay, but we're going to work our way back down. 10 to the power of 1 just means 1 factor of 10. Well, that's just 10 all by itself. Okay? Then what we end up with, uh, we're dividing by 10 each time. So if we're going to do 10 to the power of 0, we would end up with 10 over 10, which is just 1. Now we're going to use our rules of exponents. With a negative exponent, 10 to the power of negative 1 is simply we can flip, use the reciprocal and a positive exponent. So 10 to the power of 1 is 1 tenth. Okay? 10 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 100. 10 to the power of negative 3 is 1 over 1,000. And already we can see the pattern. We go from 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. 10 to the power of negative 3 is 1 over 1,000. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. 10 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 100. So when we're using these negative exponents, the negative powers of 10, we're really just getting smaller and smaller and smaller numbers. Notice that our numbers haven't dipped into the negatives at all. They're just getting closer and closer and closer to 0. So if we had a number line and you know it went up to 1,000 originally, which is 10 to the power of 3, then 1 tenth of that is 10 to the power of 2, 100, and 1 tenth of that is 10 to the power of 1, which is just 10, and if we zoom in on this guy, you don't necessarily need to draw this, but just think about it, if we zoom in on this guy, 10 to the power of 10, that's, sorry, 10 to the power of 1 is 10, and 1 tenth of that give myself some more space, is 10 to the power of 0, which is 1, and 1 tenth of that is 10 to the power of negative 1, and 1 tenth of that is 10 to the power of negative 2. So it's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, closer and closer to 0, never actually touching 0 though. So let's see how these numbers convert into decimals. 1 tenth, should be very familiar with, it's just 0 0.1. 1 one hundredth, 0 0.01. This is the tenths column. This is the hundredths column. We have one hundredth. So we can continue this down. One thousandth. 0 0.01. So now when we're talking about tiny little numbers multiplied by powers of 10 in, with negative exponents, you can see that these numbers are just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And what's happening is really we're just jumping the decimal place. 10 to the power of negative 3 is 1 with the decimal place moved 1, 2, 3 times. 10 to the power of negative 2 is just 1 with the decimal moved backwards 2 times. Okay, so the exponent tells us how many times to move the decimal place, just like scientific notation with big numbers. But this time we're moving the decimal to the left. We're adding zeros in between 1 and the decimal uh, to the right of the decimal, making our number smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so how does that apply to real numbers? Well, let's say we took the number 0 0.52, and we wanted to convert that into scientific notation. Well, we could write that as a fraction. 0 0.52 is... Uh, five, well, it's 52 hundredths, okay? But we remember that our definition for scientific notation says we're only going to have one number to the left of the decimal. Right now, 52 has two numbers to the left of the decimal. So what we're actually going to do is divide top and bottom by 10, which gives us 5.2 tenths. 5.2 over 10. Well, if we look over here, Anything over 10 is like taking that number, 5.2, and multiplying it by 10 to the power of negative 1, because 10 to the power of negative 1 is the same as 1 tenth. So if we're going to write this guy in scientific notation, 
what we're really getting is 5.2 times 10 to the power of negative 1. Okay, we're going to do that with a few more numbers working down. If you have some space, uh, that would be helpful. So this time we'll take a smaller number. Instead of 52 hundredths, we'll take 52 thousandths. And again, what we need is one decimal place to the left, sorry, one value, one number to the left of the decimal. So this is the same as 5.2 over 100, which is just 5.2 times 1 over 100. And we know 1 over 100 can be represented as 10 to the power of negative 2. So in scientific notation, this number is simply 5.2 times 10 to the power of negative 2. And let's double check our moving decimals theory. Basically what this means, 10 to the power of negative 2, is that I'm going to take, don't write, you don't necessarily need to write this, or at least not here because it'll be in the way. But all that means is I need to move this decimal place two spots. So I'm going to add a 0 and a 0 so that I can actually do this and go 1, 2. 0 0.052, which is exactly what we started with, so I know that this works and that my value is correct. Okay, let's work down our chart with a couple more examples. 0 0.0052. This is 52 ten thousandths, which is 5.2 one thousandths. Right, dividing top and bottom by 10 to get an equivalent fraction, which in scientific notation is 5.2 times 1 over 1,000, and 1 over 1,000 is 10 to the power of negative 3. So if we look at our numbers that we made in scientific notation, just by looking at the power of 10, I know that this number is 10 times smaller than this number. Here we divided by 10, divided by 10. Every new step is going to be 10 times smaller than the previous number. Well, let's skip down a couple. To a number, let's say, 0, 0, 0, 5, 2. Okay, we're going to write this in scientific notation. So in order to write it in scientific notation, I need to have only one uh, digit to the left of my decimal. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, my imaginary decimal right there. Okay, I'm going to say that's where it has to be. And I'm going to count how many times did I have to move the decimal place in order to get 5.2. Well, I had to move it to the right one, two, three, four, five times. That tells me that I can rewrite this in scientific notation as 10 to the power, 5.2 times 10 to the power of negative 5. All right, directly under that, we'll just write a quick definition of what we've been doing. So, scientific notation. Scientific notation. Here's the rule. It is a number written in the form x times 10 to the power of n. where, and this, I'm going to write it a, another, a different way. Last time I used words, I said where x is greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. This time I'm going to use what's called um, an inequality to express what the number x has to be. Basically, we know that it has to be a number uh, that has only one digit to the left of the decimal place. What does that mean? That means that it has to be greater than or equal to 1. So greater than or equal to 1. But it can't have two digits to the left of the decimal place, so it must be less than 10.
and with when we're going this is just the scientific notation definition it's the exact same one we wrote for large numbers but this time we're using small numbers which means the exponent is going to be negative and all the same rules of exponents apply to this as well example one Example one, we just have to write these things in scientific notation. All right, A, 5100. Is this a big number or a small number? It's a big number, okay? It's bigger than 10. So we're going to be using uh, what kind of powers of 10, positive or negative? Positive. positive. We need this to get bigger, okay? So this is our, our old rule from last lesson. All we need to know is that my decimal place is here, but if I'm writing this as scientific notation, it's going to be 5.1 times something. I know that's going to be a power of 10, so it's 5.1 times 10 to the power of something. Well, how many times do I multiply 5.1 by 10 in order to get 5,100? Well, let's check. 1, 2, three times, okay? And that makes sense because 10 to the power of three is 1,000. 1,000 times five will get me 5,000, okay? That was a big one, that's review. Let's try a little one. 0 0.0051. All right, scientific notation, I know that the number that I'm working with is going to be 5.1. It has to be a number between 1 and 10 with only one digit to the left of the decimal place. And I'm going to be multiplying that by a power of 10. I just don't know which power of 10 yet. Is it going to be a positive number or a negative number? My power. Negative. It's going to be a negative number because this is a number smaller than 10. All right, I can put my imaginary decimal place here, and I can count how many hops it takes to get there. One, two, three. So this one is 10 to the power of negative three. All right, so let's take a quick view at what happened here. Here we have 5.1 times 10 to the power of positive three, and we got a number that's big in the thousands. Okay, 5,000. Here, we got a number, uh, exact same base, exact same starting value, 5.1 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Okay, so here we have 5.1 over 1,000. We have 51 ten thousandths or 5.1 thousandths. Example 2. Example two helps us to use our uh, laws. Simply says evaluate, and we get this expression to work with. 3.2 times 10 to the power of negative two times five times 10 to the power of negative four. And we have to evaluate it. Basically, what you have to realize is that this big piece is really just a number, okay? In this case, it's a negative exponent, so this is a really small number, and this one is actually 10 to the power of negative four, so it's actually a lot smaller again than this guy. There's two different ways to do it. You could uh, simplify this, and then simplify that, and then put it together, but we know that we can apply our commutative law of multiplication. All we have here is 3.2 times one one hundredth times five times one ten thousandth. Okay, so I'll just rearrange it. We'll put our regular numbers together because it's multiplication. I can multiply this in any order we want, ignoring the brackets. And then we'll put our powers of ten. In multiplying these digits, these numbers, I just use regular multiplication. You can do this one in your head. You have three times five is 15, and then you have two tenths times five, which is 10 tenths, which is another one. So this is just 16. If you can't do that in your head, 
Do that in your calculator. Not a big deal. Okay? And now we can take our powers of 10. Well, we have a rule that says if we have the same base and it's multiplication, all we have to do is add the exponents. So here we have 10 to the power of negative 2 minus 4 in our exponent, which is 16 times 10 to the power of negative 6. This is still not in scientific notation, though. What's the problem? I have two digits to the left of my decimal. So I need to make one more jump there, which means this exponent is going to go into the negatives one deeper. If I'm moving this, uh, basically moving this decimal means I'm dividing by 10. Dividing by 10 looks like that, which you know looks like this. So I need another factor of, uh, another negative factor of 10, I guess you could say. 1.6 times 10 to the power of, uh, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. It's negative 5. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, because to get this 1.6, needs to be multiplied by one more positive power of 10 in order to be the same as this. So it's going to have one less negative exponent. Sorry for mixing that up. All right, your practice problems for scientific notation with small numbers is page 116, numbers 1 through 27.